So pulmonary embolism, everyone, how do we diagnose it? I put this here as an exercise to see what would you expect if you order one of these tests with someone with a PE. So in most cases, when we talk about ABG, remember most PEs aren't going to be, you know, a obstructive shock. They're going to be just, you know, a PE that may have gone unnoticed. It could be just a little pleuritic chest pain. So on an ABG, what do we see? Well, most of the time, if you have pleuritic chest pain, you may be a little tachypnic. And if you're tachypnic and your minute ventilation is going up, your pH should go up, your CO2 goes down, you may get a respiratory alkalosis, right? And what happens to your AA gradient? It's going to what? Widen. Yeah. ABG. Chest x-ray. Can you diagnose a PE solely based on a chest x-ray? And the answer is probably not. You know what I mean? But if I were to ask you, and this is a classic board review question, what is the most common finding on a chest x-ray if you have a pulmonary embolism? What would be the answer? Yeah, I would say that, you know, um, essentially normal is the right answer. Of course, you know, if you ask that to a radiologist, they may say maybe a little pleural fusion, maybe some metalectasis. But what is uh, one of those classic findings on chest x-ray if you have a pulmonary embolism? You get those wedge infarcts sometimes. And remember, they have those memorized names. And remember those names? Hampton's Hump. So you could think about those Hampton's Hump. So let me show you some pictures, everyone. You have all the writing here. So here's a wedge-like infarct on a chest x-ray. Here it is on the CT. Now, it's very difficult to infarct the lung because the lung has what? Dual bud supply, right? So it's very hard to infarct the lung in these cases. This is called Western Mark Sign, everyone. So it's kind of like the lack of markings. So over here, you see lots and lots of markings. Over here, no markings. So it's a pretty big PE. They call that Western Mark Sign. How about this question? Can you diagnose a PE solely based on an ECG? What's the answer? Well, in general, the answer is no. You can't diagnose a PE on an ECG. But if I were to ask, what is the most common finding on ECG? The answer is? Sinus tachycardia. I can't get you guys. You're amazing. It's always sinus tachycardia. But you can get, there are definitely, there are things that indicate right-sided heart strain. I put it up there. S1, Q3, T3. That means that there's right-sided heart strain. You also could get right bundle blanch block, right side, right axis deviation, also associated with pulmonary embolism. What about this, a VQ scan? Can you diagnose and treat someone based upon the results of a VQ scan? And the answer is yes. Definitely in the, I hate saying it again, olden days, you know, you get a normal chest x-ray. We thought about getting a VQ scan. Nowadays, we only really do VQ scans when you can't do the gold standard, which is what? CT angio. And the only reason nowadays you can't get a CT angio is because you can't give the what? Contrast. So, you know, um, VQ scan, definitely I would treat based upon it. Results, you know, it's not positive or negative. It's always based upon their pretest probability, but I definitely would treat based upon it.